Your folks home? Nope. Want to buy the press? Why? Because it's a great paper and a great deal. Like what? Like seven days of the press for one dollar. Including Sundays? Especially Sundays. Look at the new and colorful Sunday press. That's a good deal. To get the press, seven days for just one dollar, see your press carrier. And don't throw it in the bushes. <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't dream of it. In this section of our auto test, we've got four questions on auto-related jobs in the greater Cleveland area. Okay, Otto? My uncle owns a car wash, Wilma. Does that make me auto-related? Well, no, Otto, but it makes your uncle auto-related. Oh. <laughs> Detroit may have the automobile chiefs, but Cleveland has the Indians. Okay. Ready for section two of our test. The first question in the auto-related jobs category is this. How many workers in the greater Cleveland area have auto-related jobs? A, one out of 50, B, one out of 20, C, one out of 10, D, one out of five, or E, one out of two? The answer is D, one out of five. This includes car dealers, repair shops, service stations, car washes, any job related to the automobile. But now let's zero in on manufacturing. Our next question is, how many manufacturing jobs are there in auto-related industries in Cuyahoga County? A, 10,500, B, 30,500, C, 60,500, D, 90,500, or E, 110,500? Well, the answer is 90,500. Now, that's 43% of the county's manufacturing employment. Jeff, I've got another question that ties in with all of that. How many people in Northeast Ohio worked for the big three automakers back in 1980? Is it A, 125,000, B, 100,000, C, 75,000, or D, 50,000? The answer here is B, 100,000 people in Northeast Ohio were employed by Chrysler, Ford, or General Motors in 1980. Let's go out now to Bill Jaycox and Eileen Corey at the Chevy Body Stamping Plant in Parma. And the 100,000 people employed by the Big Three doesn't even begin to represent the number of people involved in automaking in our area. And what's even more surprising is that in 1980, General Motors and Ford bought about $135 million worth of goods and services from Greater Cleveland suppliers. Thanks, Bill. That leads us to our next question. True or false? The typical auto supplier is a large corporation. The answer here is false. Of GM's 32,000 suppliers, for example, 52% employ 25 or fewer workers. And did you know that 46 of the 69 automobile supplier industries are represented by companies in Cuyahoga County? That's true, so help me. Uh, you need all the help you can get, Otto. But that's another story. Let's get back to Bill and Eileen. One of Cleveland's largest industries, the steel business, is a supplier to the automakers. That's right, Eileen. As a matter of fact, more than a half of all the steel produced in Cleveland's J&L plants goes into auto production. And a lot of the work devoted to developing lightweight steels for tomorrow's lighter weight cars is done at Republic Steel's Research Center in Independence. Takers, if you got all four answers in our second category right, you are an expert on automobile employment. But no matter how many you answered correctly, you now know a lot more about the tremendous impact of the auto industry on our greater Cleveland economy. We'll get into our next section about buying and financing an automobile when the Greater Cleveland Auto Test returns. Shh. This is Mike Pruitt's house. I'm really going to surprise him. You see, Mike's one of those guys that's always trying to outdo you. The skinniest ties, the smallest calculators, the pedigree pet rock. Well, you see this blanket and hat? Got them at National City Bank. They're terrific. And you can really warm up to them. Mike doesn't know about them yet. Will he be surprised? Ta-da! Doug, my man! Real cute. Only at National City Bank. Wish I had a gas saver like his. Maybe you can win one. So Ohio's so impressed with today's even bigger lineup of fuel-efficient American cars, we're having a brand new All-American Gas Saver Sweepstakes. You mean I've got another chance? Each week, it's a new sweepstakes, a new chance to win an American Gas Saver. Just come to Ohio, pick up an entry form, and mail it in. 
Well, we're going to enter every week for sure, aren't we? Enter Ohio's All-American Gas Saver Sweepstakes now. This week, you might win a Ford EXP. It's time to get on with the next category of our auto test, buying and financing new and used cars. True or false, you can usually get a better deal by buying a car the dealer has in stock than you can by ordering one from him. The answer is true. The dealer wants to sell the cars he already has in inventory, so he'll usually give you the best possible deal. It's time for our next question. True or false, most cars in the same price category offer about the same standard options. Well, the answer's false. Let's go to Alan DiPietro and Marge Banks for an explanation. As we can see by these two stickers, the total dealer price on similar cars can vary all over the lots. Oh. <laughs> so when you buy a new car, be sure to check each make and model to see which features are standard equipment and which are extra cost options. Mm -hmm. It can make a big difference. Once people have selected a new car, Jeff, what do they do about financing? Well, that's our next uh, question, Wilma, and here it is. Nowadays, new car loans are usually paid over how long a time period? A, 24 months. B, 36 months, C, 48 months, or D, 60 months? The answer is C, 48 months. But Wilma, I've heard that the newest type of car financing is something called the variable rate loan. Hmm. Right, Jeff. The variable rate loan is designed to adjust to fluctuating interest rates. You pay a fixed amount each month, but the length of the loan may change according to what happens to interest rate levels. And today's high interest rates are one of the reasons people are holding off on buying a new car. Many people think they have to pay the prime interest rate. Actually, interest rates on auto loans have been considerably less than the prime rate. You want to be excused, Otto? No. I've got a test question about car payments, Jeff. Okay, shoot. Okay, true or false? The average car payment takes a lot bigger cut out of monthly income today than it did 10 years ago. Surprise, the answer is false. Despite higher sticker prices and higher interest rates, the average car payment actually takes a lower percentage of household income than it did in 1971. Yeah, you're right, Otto. The figures back you up. According to a leading New York research firm, the average new car buyer in 1971 paid $115 per month for 36 months on an auto loan. And average after-tax household income was $956 a month. So the average car payment took 12% of monthly income. Now, last year, the average car payment was $195 a month for 48 months, but household income grew to $1,909. So the car payment was only 10.2% of a family's monthly income, over 1% less than in 1971. Jeff, I also hear there's a new Ohio tax law that gives us a break when we buy a new or a used car. Yes, there is. And before the new law went into effect on the 1st of August, if you bought a new or used car for $8,000 and traded in a $4,000 car, you had to pay the state tax on the whole $8,000. Now, you'd only pay the tax on $4,000, the difference between the cost of the new car or used car you're buying and the value of your trade-in. But if you sell your car yourself, the buyer would have to pay tax on the book value. That's right, Wilma. Now that we've covered buying and selling cars, let's find out how much people know about leasing a car. Okay, Jeff, here's the question. True or false? Most people who lease cars are professional people. The answer is false. Actually, about half the leases are for average drivers. Like me? <laughs> let's go to Marge Banks and Alan DiPietro for more information now about leasing a car. This is an open-end lease, Jeff. It gives people the option to either renew the lease or buy the car. And currently, about 20% of the people who lease cars take that option. Well, Marge, obviously, leasing is not for everybody. While your initial cash outlay is less than it would be if you bought a new car, and monthly payments are less in most cases, your credit has to be very, very good to get a lease. And if you're under 25 years old, you could have a problem. I'd say the best thing to do is talk it over with both the leasing company and your car dealer 
to see which way you should go. Mm. But again, it pays to shop around. Leasing costs can vary as much as five to six dollars a month between established leasing companies. And companies who are eager to get a bigger share of the market are chopping monthly rates by 20 to 30 dollars. Jeff, there are a lot of people who buy used cars instead of buying or leasing new cars. Here are Marge and Alan again with some tips on that. This is the actual mileage, Marge. Today, the law requires dealers to verify the mileage on any used car they sell and to give you a signed statement to prove it. And why don't you tell people how they can find out about a fair price for a used car, Alan? Well, Marge, this little book here, this is the NADA official used car guide, and it's available at most banks and savings and loans. You can also find it in insurance company offices and in libraries. And there's one key way you can find out whether you're getting a good used car, right? Just have the car checked out by your own mechanic and just tell the dealer that's, that's what you want to do. I'll bet there were a lot of experts out there who answered all five questions in this category correctly. How are you doing with your answers so far? Our next section is coming up, and if you think you're an expert on auto maintenance, we'll find out when we return to the Greater Cleveland Auto Test after this message. As a consumer, you want to deal with companies you can depend on, companies that are well-managed. That's one reason the Automobile Dealers Educational Assistance Foundation was formed, to assist in teaching people how to manage the various departments of an automotive dealership. This means giving them an education in such specialized areas as economics, accounting, banking and finance, inventory management, and customer service. So in 1964, Cleveland dealers contributed substantially to the development of a two-year course in automobile dealer management at Northwood Institute in Midland, Michigan. They donated funds to build this automotive building and to establish endowments and scholarship funds at Northwood. So far, over 100 Cleveland area students have graduated with the specialized skills and knowledge required in good automobile dealerships. Thanks to their dedication to this kind of education, our Cleveland automobile dealers are among the best in the country. Because an automobile is the second largest investment most of us ever make, confidence in our automobile dealers is of paramount importance. That's why it's good for all of us that our Cleveland automobile dealers really know their business. Now the Greater Cleveland Auto Test continues with five questions on automobile maintenance, including its effect on gas mileage. The first question on maintenance is a multiple choice. Frequent tune-ups may improve gas mileage by A, 5%, B, 12%, or C, 18%. The answer is B, 12%. So let's go out to Joel Rose and Jan Jones to see why keeping your car tuned up and running right is more than worth the expense, especially at today's gasoline prices. Jeff, will you please call the Automobile Club for me? Uh, Joel, it's not called the Automobile Club anymore. It's called the Ohio Motorists Association. But it is still the oldest automobile club in the United States. It was founded in 1900. I don't care how old it is. Just call them Joel, for me. Joel, be nice. But look at this yeah, turkey. It's not Jeff's fault. I think we'd better check back with Joel and Jan a little bit later. It's time now for our second question. How would you answer this one? A single misfiring spark plug can reduce your gas mileage by about A, 5%, B, 15%, or is it C, 25%? The answer is C, about 25%. According to a major spark plug manufacturer, one misfiring spark plug can cost you as much as 25% in gas mileage in a six-cylinder engine and more than 30% in a four-cylinder engine. Well, that's a surprise, Wilma. Now, are you ready for another question? How often should you have your oil filter changed? A, every time you change oil, B, every other time, or C, every 10,000 miles? Now, the answer is A, every time you change the oil. Right. You don't want to run nice, clean oil through a yucky filter. That's right, Otto. Dirt particles in your lubrication system can cause wear and tear on the working parts. You're telling me. Oh, poor Otto. Well, but speaking of problems, how do you suppose Joel and Jan are doing? I can't believe we were just out of gas. From here on, I'll drive. I think I'll walk. Well, a rose is a rose is a rose.